Hello. Is everybody awake? How many people here are developers? Should be all of you, I guess, right? How many are managers? There's always one, see? There's always one. How many people have drunk beer last night? Wine, all that kind of stuff? So you're awake? How many have been drinking beer today already? Jeez, that's like the whole room. All of you. Okay, how many people have a career right now in open source? Very small amounts. Why? How many people are students? Okay, sorry I gotta do that, I can't see you with all the lights. Um, what we're gonna talk about today is how to jumpstart your career in open source, should you so wish to do that. Um, I cannot imagine why not. Um, it's, it's really a simple process. Um, it's, it's something that is uh, uh, quite easy to do. Um, it involves three little hints I'm gonna give you. Um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is, is you personally. Uh, that means you here in the front row. That means you up there, and even the guy up there at the top. Doesn't matter. Um, I think I'm gonna describe a little bit of your background as how you've gone along in your career path. And what that's gonna mean to get you to grow and, and, and to share and to do some stuff that has nothing to do with code. So I'm not gonna talk about the obvious stuff. Everybody probably thought I was gonna come up here and tell you, tell you how to do a pull request or what project you need to commit to. I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna talk about some stuff that's kind of intrinsic, kind of fluffy. It's nothing like any of the other talks you've had so far. And it's pretty brave that you guys stayed to the end to get to see this. Um, so three things, you, share, grow. See how that works? It's a journey, right? My journey has been about 20 years now to get to where I'm at. It's all open source, all the way, all the time. Even when I made a mistake and worked for a company that was closed source, I brought it in with me, the things I'm gonna show you. You can make a difference, you can change the world. Those of you that raise your hand for, for uh, that you're working in open source, how many of you spoke somewhere? One, there was more hands than that. There's no reason you shouldn't be up here next year sharing whatever you share. You saw the talks were pretty diverse that we were doing the whole time, right? They were pretty diverse. It wasn't just code, it wasn't just, you know, how to talk to the Google Assistant, it wasn't just about the PHP stuff. There was some product management stuff. There was all different kinds of stuff where everybody's an expert at something, right? So let's start with you. When you look at what you're doing, where you've been and where you've come from, it's really, really important to understand that most of the time you've had fun in what you're doing is when you're doing what you like. So you have a boss that pays you to do something, it's not always what you like, and I bet you hobby a lot of times on stuff. How many people here hobby outside of work on code? More than half the room is willing to admit that. I bet there's more than that. How many hobby at work on that code? boss isn't here, I guess, right? Where did this all start? Um, we all started university somewhere. Uh, we all got excited about probably math. We were really good at that. And we liked to solve puzzles. We started coding, right? And I don't know about you, but I didn't get to this until I was almost 28. I was much older. I did some military service in the States before I got into this stuff. I moved to the Netherlands afterwards and I started studying. And I stumbled upon Linux. And I was so frustrated with things around closed source that it was like a complete opening of my eyes that I can dig down and dig down and solve the problem and find what was wrong. Maybe I wasn't smart enough to fix it yet. But then I started looking for programming languages and code and stuff like that that you can start digging into, right? Everybody remember that experience? You've had this experience? It's pretty normal nowadays, right? Back then it was a little bit more rare. So everybody's probably dabbled in open source because most universities don't have a lot of money for, 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 for the tools and the stuff they give you. And plus you go home, and that's where it started for me too. Uh, I was studying under Tannenbaum. We were doing an, an OS called Minix. Might have heard of it. Uh, we had to do some stuff at home. The only way you could do that at home and get it to work was to use Linux. He didn't have a, a networking stack. He didn't have any of that kind of stuff developed on his OS. That was what your lab was about. So you had to go home, you had to work on this stuff. And then we get done with school and we end up having a job. How many people here work for some place that doesn't do just pure open source? So you're all working at open source places? 
Maybe I've lost you. You all fell asleep already. I can't really see with the light here. But I personally went off to a, a, a very large software company uh, from the U.S. and spent about two years. Uh, immediately brought the open source with me and started using open source stuff on top of my laptop, which was supposed to be non-open source stuff. You find a way, you hobby, you, you get stuff done, right? You do what you want to do. And then the farther you get along in your career in, as a professional developer, uh, these words start popping up, things like this. I mean, these are the hot ones right now, digital transformation, uh, cloud, hybrid cloud, private cloud, hybrid multi-cloud, all kinds of crazy stuff. They're talking about containers, uh, whatever. Uh, you're constantly having to learn, you're constantly having to keep up. How many hours are there in the day? You're not always getting to learn the stuff you want to learn. Uh, that's why you're here, right? You're attending the sessions you want to attend because you want to learn something new or it's stuff that interests you. So how many people here went to the PHP session? Do you code in PHP? Have you ever coded in PHP? Yeah, <laughs> of course, me too. That's why I was there. I want to see who wrote it and see what he's got to say about the new stuff. It's kind of cool. I don't do that for a day job. I mean, if I find the right problem, I use the tool, right? It's the way it works. The more senior you get, the more bigger your toolbox is going to get. But what do you want? That's the thing I keep hitting on here. Huh? What do you want? The back of your head, it used to be a big deal way back in the day that some companies in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley would give you 20% of your time to do whatever you want. Who here does not spend 20% of the time doing what they want at work? Yeah. <laughs> That's not even a thing anymore, right? That's where innovation happens. That's what we're doing, what we love, right? At least that's the way it works for me. That's how I got where I'm at now. Constantly pursuing what I, how many people here has somebody at work that complains all the time? Yeah, sound familiar? Uh, I mentor a lot of people. The first thing I say to somebody like that is, why don't you find a new job? You know, if you're that unhappy, why? There's no reason. We work in IT, or we want to work in IT, right? There's jobs all over the place. I've been looking at the app. Even at this conference, people are offering you a job those little chat things, right? And you want to build cool things. So part of the storyline in this is that we're going to share and talk about stuff, and, and I'm going to do that too. So this picture here, remember this, and when you see me after this session, because I don't have a large session slot here to go into great detail about what this picture means to me, ask me. If you see me at the dinner tonight or you see me at the club, pub, wherever we're at, ask me about this. I'll share. So we want to build cool stuff, right? I mean, I don't get paid to build Lego, build Lego uh, baseball players. It'd be a pretty cool job if you did. Somebody's got that job. Somebody does this. They do it quite regularly. <laughs> uh, one of our offices happens to be in, uh, in Germany. Right upstairs is, uh, is the uh, Lego office, and you can see it's a square building with glass windows, and you can look across the other side, and they are over there building crap at their desk. That's awesome. <laughs> it's not, not my dream job, but, I mean, I really get it that you want to do something like that, right? I get that there's people that like that. We also want a toolbox, and we want the coolest tools, right? Another reason you're here. I don't know about you, but I really, really want that big old drill over there. And just about as much as I want the little one. I mean, if you're somebody that's into engineering and into coding and into solving problems and puzzles, you like to fix things, how many people here do mechanical things, not just code? I restored a Mini Cooper, one of those old ones. I love that. Small parts, very inexpensive. <laughs> find them everywhere. It's really easy. It's fun. Didn't have a drill like that, though. That's really cool. So we also want to play in the playground. We want to play with the things we like, right? This is, this is not so much that it's saying you're going to play with everything on here, but something in here must be interesting to you or you wouldn't even be here, right? There's things in the open source community that we stumble upon, uh, drive architects crazy by sneaking it into our architectures solves a problem, makes my life easier, that kind of thing. Maybe the tool doesn't work 100% the way I like it, so I improve it. Push that back to the community, that kind of thing. Not only do we want to make cool things, eventually down the road we want to change the world somewhat, right? Who here thinks that they're going to write a line of code that exists in three years, five years? I found one. I have an example. I wrote it. It's in my old job. It's still there. I have friends that go back as consultants and look it up and send it back out to me again. It's a very simple web service. They use it internally. 
uh, what it is a Java service. I think it's one line of code, so you really can't optimize that no more. And all it does is look up a, a zip code in the Netherlands to see if you're real when you use some process or submit something to the bank. Got that baby. That's mine. <laughs> so I think I might make my retirement, and that might still exist if the bank still exists. But it would be wonderful if something we does change the world. And I'm not saying you have to be the guy that developed PHP like this morning or come up with the next programming language. You don't need to set your goals here. You can take steps to get to wherever it's going to go. You never know where it's going to go. Follow your passion is what you need to be doing. So what does this picture make you think? Oh, <laughs> Right? Come on, secretly you all thought, oh. Even the geeks. Sharing. It's a really basic, fundamental human nature thing, right? We all do it. We all should be doing it. Or are you more of the person that pulls the apple away? Everybody know Charlie Brown? You know the football? <laughs> Lucy puts it out there every year and he runs up and kicks it. She pulls it away. Are you that person? <laughs> so if you share, things will happen. Wonderful things will happen. A large part about sharing has to do with I don't care what you are, how long you've been doing it, where you're working, where you come from, what your language is. There are so many things that you could share to somebody else. And you might be a junior developer coming in. I get that you want to be quiet in the beginning. But it all starts with you from day one. As you learn, as you grow, as you share things, right? Open is a culture. Uh, it's, it's not easy. It's hard to make the time. It's hard to take that 20% and share some stuff. But you should be. When was the last time you wrote something down and published it for everybody? When was the last time you Twittered and shared something about some code and pointed at a project you did? When was the last time? Think about that. Such a shame. This is a room full of knowledge here. I don't know how many people I can't count with the lights on me, but maybe you count, tell me. How many people here have done that this last week? That's really cool, huh? So when we share, we grow, right? That's, that's getting toward the grow phase. And things like publishing, things like socializing. You all have a phone, don't you? <laughs> it doesn't take much to use the phone. We all have computers. And open organizations, if you're lucky enough to get into something like this, uh, working for Red Hat, we, it's central and core to what we do. Uh, I'm not here to preach about Red Hat or anything. This is where I come from. So you're going to see a few examples and things in there because we, we showcase this. When you... When I was originally in, in just open source communities and doing that stuff before I came into Red Hat, uh, I came into Red Hat and expected more of an enterprise culture or a culture like some of the bigger I, uh, IT companies I've worked at. I was completely surprised that the same way of communicating that happens in a project happens at Red Hat to this day. I started with 2,000 people. We're now well over 12,000. It's crazy. We still use mailing lists. You can find arguments between our CEO and the lowest level engineer on these mailing lists. Everybody has a voice. When they ask for our new company motto, they, they shop it across the company. Not many do that anymore. It's why people come in and don't really want to leave. I don't know where, I, where else I'm, I shouldn't say this at the recording, but I don't know where else I want to work probably killing my future if I'm going to go somewhere else, but this is just the greatest place on earth because of these reasons. It's core to what I feel and what I do in IT. I share. Every guy that came up here on the stage, every girl that came up here on the stage was sharing things with you. And it's really important how we do that. I don't know how many, say, say we got 100 people in the room, 100 times 30 minutes, that's 50 hours of time. Am I burning 50 hours of your time or am I increasing the value of that hour? by sharing something worth sharing, right? That's, I got to take it as an important thing to stand here and teach you guys something. When you walk around our companies, you see things like every one of these phrases are to remind us where we came from and what it's about. And every one of them's true. Every one of them's true. And it's not easy. You can do this anywhere. I don't care where I go after this, I'm still going to keep doing this. I've been doing this everywhere I've been. I've been to lots of small software houses. I'm always the one doing this, always, right? And you're going to grow as you, as you do this. You're going to see that things start coming to you, that people start coming to you, that work starts coming to you, that uh, people come to you for ideas. Um, 
it's really hard to be, you sort of maybe have heard the phrase, like if, if you can have the best idea in the world, but if you're in the corner and you don't tell anybody about it, it's only in here, it's pretty useless, right? Imagine if Einstein would have sat on his theory. Maybe the president of America should sit on a few more of his theories, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but you see that that stone, what it's doing is it's, it's completing the bridge, right? It's such a simple visual, but it's exactly what you can do. It only takes that one last stone and you might be it, right? You never know. You never know what you're going to do and where it's going to lead. I'll tell you right now, when I was growing up, I grew up in Oregon. It's cowboy country. I actually was a cowboy one summer on a farm. I never thought I'd be programming computers, standing here on stages in Karatsia. Beautiful cities, beautiful people all over the world. I've walked on the Chinese wall, all because of open source, all because of sharing, all because of what I do. You never know where it's going to go. You never know. You really don't. So it's up to you. It's all back to you. I can't do it for you. We can show you this. You can hear this. But you got to do it. You got to do it can't make you. I gladly talk about this over dinner, over beers, I'll tell you even more, right? I'll tell you more stories. So how do we do that? How do you start doing some of this sharing? I'm going to give you a couple of really concrete examples along the lines of publishing, socializing, that kind of thing. How many people here like to write? And I didn't expect a ton of hands. <laughs> I did not like to write in the beginning either. It might not even be uh, possible for you to write in an international language, which is not, nothing to be ashamed of, right? Do it in your, whatever you're strong in. It doesn't have to be a book. Nobody's going to read your blog post that's longer than scrolling down two pages. Anyway, there's a good tip right there. Um, it could be 140 characters of what you just did pointing to your project. It could be 110 characters about how something just blew up in your face. And you don't want to point at the code because it doesn't work yet, right? That kind of thing. Um, writing is about being consistent and, and being on message, picking something that you're doing and writing about it, sharing. For most of us, we work behind a computer somewhere. It's maybe in, this, in, in, in a basement somewhere, in a building, in a cube. You're not exactly always getting the chance to go every week and do this in front of a large group. And it's nice that I have 100 people, but if I do a video of something I did and put that on YouTube, I think I'm going to hit more than 100 people. If I write a blog post, I get 30,000 views on my site, for example. That comes over time. It doesn't start that way. You shouldn't be frustrated about it. You need to write, 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 right? And how do we go about that? You've got to set targets, very reachable, achievable targets. So I'm showing you there on the side a list of what I've been doing over the years, and that just happens to be really high targets because I've been doing this for a while. I know you want, I want to stretch goal my stuff, and it's part of my work. But you could very easily say, I want to write one or two a month. I have people I mentor that really, really want to do what I do, right? How do I do that? How do I get there? Well, first of all, you got to write. You have to write. You have to share. The best way to share is to put it down on paper. Actually, my writing started because I, as a developer, got tired of trying to find that solution that I looked up two months ago. So I turned around, redid it, modernized it in whatever version of Java I was using or PHP or whatever the hell it was, and put it on my site, too. You know, to this day, one of the most hit articles on my site was written, I think, in 2009. Uh, it's JBoss serialization, so it's a class that serializes to a database and then sucks it back out. It's about this much code on the screen, that's it. People, and, and we're talking about JBoss stuff, open source stuff, that, that old, people have still got that somewhere in their company? Are they using that to like update to new versions? I don't know, but it's still crazy high in my all-time list. You never know what's going to help somebody. And it starts with a personal urge, a personal itch that you always hear about in open source. Make it shareable. Everything I have has to be found with search engines. There's no hiding it behind walls. There's no ads on my stuff. I'm not interested in making money off this. That will come. That comes all by itself. Share what you know. Help people. They start to follow what you're doing. If you have multiple things you want to talk about, split that up. Each one of these things needs to be on, on message, focused on what you're talking about, right? And then you need to get the word out. And socializing makes everybody an author, right? Everybody can reach somebody. 
Now, if you look at your Twitter feed right now and it says you have three followers, that's not a problem. Look at those three and see how many they have. I started out with three followers. Right now, I'm around 6,000. I didn't buy them. These are real. <laughs> or at least I think they're real. They stay around anyway. Um, but you watch the growth, you measure it, and it happens by itself. And I have about four Twitter feeds that I use four different messages. One of them has to do with that baseball picture. I'll tell you about that another time. Unless somebody asks it as a question. But you see here, over time, it grows. It just, you, you'll, you'll, you'll immediately see what's gaining traction and what isn't. You'll watch your, your metrics go through the roof. Or maybe they flatline. So maybe that's not what anybody's interested in. You know, maybe you only did it for a month and then you move on. It happens. Number two, a lot of companies will want you to do stuff on their sites. Do that, but always put it somewhere else because they're going to kill those sites eventually, long before you want to lose your content. Remember, you are who you are for the next 20, 30 years, 40 years until you retire. So it'd be kind of nice if you have all your own content stored somewhere, right? It's a good idea. And then start bringing it to the masses. Now, what this is is that what you're doing, believe it or not, you might think you're a very dry, uh, the words they call us are nerds and, and geeks and whatever, right? That we're not social, but this is very artistic what we're doing. You're being creative, whether you know it or not. When you solve these problems, there might be, uh, the, the tools you use are mathematical, but the problems you're solving are very, very hard to do. Everybody uses, if you write bank software, everybody at the bank is using it, right? It's, you're solving problems for people every day. And how you bring it to the masses is up to you. You can do it in a podcast. There's guys that start podcasts. You can do it in a blog post. You can do it by standing on a stage. It doesn't have to be as nice as this one. But, uh, you know, meetups and stuff. When I come up with a new idea and a new whatever, I go to a very small group in, in Scotland. They were the very first ones that invited me, and they keep inviting me back. So anytime I have something new, I bring it to them first, get feedback, they tell me it's crap or it's good, whatever. You shop it everywhere. Eventually you get things like stickers, like t-shirts that we create, whatever works for you or for whatever project you're doing. Be artistic, right? Have fun with it. Who here has stickers on the laptop? Yeah, I love that stuff, huh? what those stickers are there. Those are all things that I created around products at Red Hat that didn't exist. It's just fun, right? You can have some fun with this stuff. So this talk was originally supposed to be on uh, Thursday, so I was going to say, hey, you're supposed to be here to grow. You're supposed to be here to share. You're supposed to be here to, to learn something, right? And to share means you're also teaching people. So every conversation you have over a beer, every guy next to you at the urinal, I don't know if you guys do that here, chat to each other in the urinal. Um, but Everything is about sharing, everything's about learning, and you never know who's going to be standing next to you, right? Anybody here ever met somebody really famous? Did you run and tackle him, or did he just happen to be next to you all of a sudden, right? It usually happens like that, right? You turn, whoa, didn't realize he was standing there. You never know who's going to hear what you say or what you're going to share. It's not hard to be open. It's up to you to do it. So... Again, you, share, grow. That grow part, it will all happen. How many people here have to uh, do job interviews to get a job? Watch how fast that stops when you do this. They come to you. When I Google your name, what do I find? Because you come to interview at me, I'm going to Google and see what I find on, on online. It's a black hole, and I'm a little concerned. I have somebody that doesn't share. I don't know what you've done. I don't trust your, your CV, and I'm going to grill the hell out of you when you get in front of me. In this day and age, you must have something online. Come on, right? <laughs> I haven't done it in quite a while, but not long ago, it was like 10 pages of stuff. I mean, I do this professionally for a living, putting stuff out there, right? It's all focused on stuff around what I'm interested in, but it's all out there. It's up to you. You will grow, and you will never, never, never look back, and you're going to have a way better career than you ever thought you would. Trust me, those closed-source places, they're not interested in you at all. <laughs> it's 
So you need people like you out there that like what we're doing up here to make us higher and higher and higher, right? And that goes both ways. You do something that helps me, then I'm gonna like, like that. That's the way it works. You can find all this stuff online. It's also online in the app. I put a little thing in there. Feel free to ping me, find me, talk to me, ask me. I will share almost everything about my life. You can't have my bank number, but I will share a lot of stuff. If you have any questions or any help or any inductions you need or you want me to start sharing what you're doing to get a bigger following behind what you're doing, reach out, man. I'm easy. I'm very easy. Okay? Thank you so much for inviting me over here and letting me talk to you about this soft, fuzzy stuff. I hope it helps. Y'all look happy. Probably just because we're done, right? <laughs> we get to eat and drink beer. Any questions from anybody? We got about four minutes. Y'all look stunned. There you go. <laughs> you said you didn't, uh, let, me, let me see if I can uh, share this, I don't think everybody heard it. So I, I said, I don't know which company I want to work for, but you see an Apple Watch and an iCloud. No, that's uh, no cloud. <laughs> that's the, you the manager? This is code. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's too far away. That's, uh, maybe this is better. He might be an older guy with bad eyesight. Um, yeah, I like Apple Watch. Yeah. I'm, uh, that's something outside of this, but I'm very sport, sports orientated. I do a lot of cycling and, and stuff like that. Uh, so if you want to ask me about that, you can ask me about that too. But that's what this is about. It's the best one I could find. Technology is technology. I use the best tool. I told you that. <laughs> you have a better version? Garment, okay. Costs a little more. <laughs> a good one, anyway. All right. Anybody else? Anything related to sharing? And then go drink beer, eat, have fun. Talk to me later. Thank you so much.